What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we got a good, fun one for you today. Uh, we got Dan O'Coin here. Uh, Dan, I'll let you tell the people, tell the nice people uh, who you are, what you do, and who you do it for. Well, all right. Well, this will take up take up majority of the video. No, uh, so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm Dan. I'm manager of baseball analytics uh, at Driveline, and also senior analyst for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, so schedule is pretty pretty busy, full of full of a bunch of baseball nerdery, uh, but but it's what I what I enjoy to do. So, um, you know, I have, have no complaints on that front. But yeah, appreciate you having me on, Dean. Absolutely. Appreciate you making the time. Um, so Dan and I uh, talk quite a bit. One of the things we talk a lot about is uh, how to make pitchers better. And one of the things that comes up a lot is, uh, well, throwing harder makes you better. And I know there's a lot of talk on the internet about how people say velocity doesn't matter at all. Uh, but Dan and I really wanted to get together here, uh, put some information out just about why uh, velocity makes you pitch better, like why it makes pitchers better. So um, just kind of diving in on my end, I'll, I'll kind of handle like the kind of the layman's terms, like the, the coach perspective, like from an athlete and Dan will handle from like the analytics perspective. Uh, but just from, uh, from like a, an actual game playing perspective, like from, a, from someone who plays the game, uh, throwing harder, what it does is it gives the hitter less time to figure out which pitch is coming. So they have to make their decision as to which pitch is coming sooner. And uh, generally, when you have to make a decision quicker, uh, you don't have enough time to uh, always make an accurate decision. So you start throwing harder and harder and harder, and the hitter's decisions start getting worse and worse and worse as to uh, what pitch they're actually swinging at. Should they swing at the pitch in the first place? Is it a ball? Is it a strike? Things like that. Um, Dan, would love to hear uh, from your perspective uh, just uh, some um, data around that. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think probably one of the biggest, um, I don't want to say mistakes, but I guess like uh, deceiving components of analyzing velocity and performance is that you know the most readily available data source is, is MLB data, and you know there's a ton of selection bias to get into that subset in the first place, right? So like, you know, you can you can run a quick correlation of say like uh, ERA and average fastball velocity and see the relationship you'll probably get like an r squared of somewhere in between like 0 0.2 0 0.3 so like a, a moderate relationship say uh arbitrarily speaking uh but that kind of like undersells it a bit right because because uh you know the kyle hendricks of the world do really elite other things to get in that subset in the first place um so so you know you have to sort of like expand uh expand the scope and go like a level deeper to to try and like figure out hey you know how much is is velocity you know really worth uh so there's like a couple of different things that you can do i'll publish some research you can basically take uh like pitcher in, in the big leagues projected fastball velocity control for like aging and whatever else what their fastball velocity has been in the past uh and you can see basically how much they shoot above or below their projected velocity in a given season. So say in 2020 or 2021, Dean Jackson's projected to throw 92. You actually throw 93 in that season. We can see if you beat your projections or not and say like ERA or, or whatever, whatever, like strikeout percentage, whatever. Um, and when you do that, you find that each mile an hour gained or lost above or below projection costs a pitcher or allows them to, to become a little bit better to the tune of like 0.3 runs per nine innings. Um, so like Dean Jackson projected 92 mile an hour fastball throws 93, say as a projected ERA of 4.5. If you come in a mile an hour above your projection, you're looking at a 4.2 ERA, just, just in, just in a one mile an hour gain in, in fastball velocity and nothing else. Uh, that's, so that's like uh, quite a bit of value. As a clarification, that's like an average, right? So over their average. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, you can come in above and below, depending on like other stuff in your arsenal, whether you're going from the pen, like how you gain that tick, whether it's in the pen versus like in the rotation, whatever. You know, there's like a bunch of bunch of confounders there and, and randomness. But like that, that's the expectation when you average it over like hundreds, if not like thousands of pitch. Yeah. Um, so it's like quite a bit of value when you add it up over the course of season. Probably adds up if you gain like two miles an hour. It's like half a win, half a win gets you like five or six million dollars in the open market. Um, so like, you know, that, that's valuable. That's valuable in and of itself. And I think that sort of like speaks for itself. You can also just look at like uh, velo by level. 
So you can go big leagues all the way down to division one if you have access to that data. And you just see a clear trend, right? As you get higher and higher and higher, maybe with the exception of double A AA and triple A, uh, the higher you move up the affiliate ladder or even stretch it down to D1, D2, D3, JUCO, you obviously like see an expected relationship with velocity. So like, you know, there's a few different ways you can look at it, but like it's 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 pretty clear cut, right? It's important, you know, not just for fa- not just for fastball effectiveness, but your secondary pitches. There's like an article in fan graphs about Cole Uvula is t- like commenting about how the best breaking balls are thrown like, you know, at least at least like 82 to 84 miles an hour, depending on how much movement you have. And like people people like don't really recognize that like there really aren't that many highly effective 81 mile an hour sliders in the big leagues, you know, uh, and if they are, they have like 20 inches of sweep or something, you know, uh, they're just like ridiculous pitches. So like, you know, it's more than just fastball effectiveness. You get on the board. Uh, it's just like extremely important for your slider, for your curveball, everything. So, you know, obviously pretty important. Probably yeah, most and important. That's a great point you made too about uh, something that I missed as well is uh, throwing harder uh, makes your breaking pitches harder. So if you can maintain the same amount of break and you throw the fastball harder and you throw the breaking ball harder, now you can create that separation between the two pitches. You maintain the same amount of separation or a similar amount uh, and uh, do it in a faster time, you know? So it's basically decreasing the hitter's got to cover both of those, or he's got to pick one. If he can't cover both uh, and you start getting them to pick one. And that's when you start to get these ridiculous swings. You start getting a bunch more punch outs like we're seeing with the game. Um, Question I do have for you. You said that 0.3 miles an hour, uh, or excuse me, 0.3 decrease on your ERA for every roughly one mile an hour gain at the big league level. Cause I know I'm going to get some guys who throw 85 in college and are like, bro, I'm going to have a negative <laughs> ERA. But it's like, yeah, nah, yeah. nah, that works only yeah. at the big league level. Um, does that like scale up? I mean, do you have, do you have examples of guys who have gained three miles an hour on average in the big leagues and have decreased their ERA by one? I have to dig through. I have to dig through the archives. There really haven't been. There really haven't been that. No, many. not a problem. I put you on the uh, spot. I know I put you on the spot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you'd have to give me a spreadsheet heads up on that one so I can pull it up. But but uh, you know, obviously, obviously, last year is uh, was a bit different. Um, you know, there's an article I think by Ben Clemens on like average fastball velocity. And like like for big leaguers, the expectation is that you probably will lose about 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2 ticks per year. I think that's been the going rate for the past like five or six because, you know, get to the big leagues are already like 25, 26 and yada, yada. There's a bunch of other other stuff or whatever. There's a bunch of other factors. But, um, uh, you know, last year, last year was like a little bit more drastic in the in the velo decrease. Um, so so there, there probably was only one or two pitchers that probably gained three miles an hour. And I would imagine that like large chunk of that is is going from the rotation to the pen, which I think I think on average gains guys about like 0. 0.9, 0. 0.9 ticks, one tick, something like that. Um, so 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 yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty tough to to your point. It's tough to to measure the effect of like true outliers uh, in the game, guys that gain like three four miles an hour with with big league data because it's just like you know the sample size is is so low. Um, that, that, you know, think about it, think about it this way. You already would have had to have been a big leaguer, you know, and producing at a big league level and be at least three miles an hour below your velo ceiling already, you know, and then realize that return in a calendar year. And then, you know, by the time, by the time you sort of like filter down for those things, it's not that many guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and while we're on the topic, uh, do you have any idea, like what was, what was the average fastball field? Like today, if, if you, uh, you hear a kid like, Hey man, I'm in college. I want to be uh, a big leaguer. You know, what are they to have just an average fastball in the big leagues? What are we looking at from a starter righty lefty and then a reliever righty lefty, just like rough, rough, uh, estimates, or I guess not, it wouldn't be an estimate. It would be a pretty close to what the actual number is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, average big league velo, I believe is around like 93, 93 and a half miles an hour probably like a half a tick probably half a tick more for uh you know relievers and then um and then the left-handed pitcher advantage is is probably about a tick or so so like say subtract a mile an hour from that if you're if you're a lefty um so so you know i mean when you start when you start getting below like 91 uh you know you better have a lot of other you know tendencies that are at least plus to double plus, whether it's like a ton of vertical break or, uh, you know, just like 70 command or whatever, you know, like your typical workarounds, but, you know, it, 
pro probably a probably a floor moving forward is is probably about 91 whether you're right or left-handed and and um you know 93.5 is 93.5 is is probably like a fair fair sort of target if you want to look at big leaguers um and then something that again people people sort of like take for granted is like the average slider you know the big leagues is like 84 85 miles an hour you know like people forget that um and you know arguably size of fastball sliders like the most important pitch to have in your in your arsenal or whatever so like you know that's the other thing too that i think when you look at lower level pitchers even if they throw 93 94 you know, like the slider is just like 81 or whatever, you know, and then on the flip side, if they throw 90 and they're dropping the right amount off their slider, it's like 80, 81, 82. Mm. Um, and it's just like, you know, not, not good enough, you know? So, so those are, those are big things like 93 and a half on the fastball and then like 80, 45 on the slider. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, for those watching, those are average numbers. Again, I will yeah. freaking scream that from the rooftops because uh, the amount of times I've been like, oh, I threw an average fastball today. It's like, that's great. You threw one of them. Uh, you need yeah. all the other ones, including your bad days to average out to that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and one last thing I want to get in here, uh, get from you, Dan, is you've mentioned a few times like a workaround to velocity. So if you don't throw a certain velocity, uh, you got to have some sort of workaround. So obviously, uh, from a player's perspective, I'm thinking things like command. I'm thinking things like stuff, uh, like an elite ability to maybe read hitters and to decide what they're thinking and to throw the other thing, like create a plan and execute the plan. Uh, I'm interested to hear your perspective when you say some workarounds to throwing velocity. Uh, what are some of those uh, that you look at? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, the main thing, the main thing is, is probably just like pitch movement in, in general. So like, if you have, you know, if you have a velo in like the 88 to, to 91 range, um, you know, like typically if you have like close to 20 inches of V break or, or better on your fastball, like, you know, that that's like a decent enough workaround to where you'll probably miss enough bats with your fastball um, with below average velocity. And then obviously, you know, spotting up, is is uh basically the most straightforward workaround that that everybody talks to i mean I, I will say that you know um the game the game is changing uh quite a bit uh to where i think i think sort of the the evolution of a how the ball is flying out of the ballpark uh b how much value then uh, is extracted from a swing and miss and a strikeout right like every ball in play moving forward uh, at least over the past like two, three, four years has been more valuable because just more baseballs have left the left the ballpark. And I think like as hitters start to go through that same sort of evolution that pitchers have where like they come to the realization that velo matters, right? So if we're talking about 2008 in the big leagues, average fastball is like 90.9 miles an hour. You know, now we're looking at 93 and a half. Uh, so in, in a decade, we've gained about like three ticks uh, or so. Uh, I would imagine that that same sort of realization is going to occur in hitting now that we have exit velocity and we start to better understand the relationship between that and bat speed. Uh, so I just think, I just think hitters uh, and also hitters getting smarter and realizing like, you know, like you're not going to get paid by, by just hitting singles or whatever, or spraying, whatever slice, slice, top spinning baseballs all around the yard, whatever. So like, um, you know, swing and miss is going to become more valuable. And so like command is great. Command is great. And it is a workaround or whatever, but like, keep in mind, like, you know, I think command is probably more closely correlated with weak contact than, than say, you know, a swing and miss or whatever. Um, and so, and so just keep that in mind as like the game sort of evolves, what sort of that profile looks like and how it plays in, in 2025 versus 2020. Um, so I guess, I guess a lot, that's a long winded way of saying that like commands a workaround today, but I think like that it'll be the, the thresholds to like have really good command and live at 88 to 90 without elite movement is going to get higher and higher and higher. Um, so, so, you know, the, there's not a lot of Jamie Moyers left in the game. Um, and I'd imagine like that type of profile will, will filter itself out, uh, over time, unless there's like significant rule changes or whatever. Um. And then obviously like secondary stuff is important. You know, if you can throw 80 to 90, like we talked about average big leaguer drops, like whatever, eight or nine miles an hour off their fastball to, to throw their slider. If you'd only, you know, need to drop four or five miles an hour to, 
to throw it and then you can throw that pitch like 30 percent of the time or something you know you could maybe get away with it if it has like a decent movement profile and you can spot it up pretty well but you know it, it, it's always going to be difficult velo just gives you more margin for error you know and like that's that's the key thing just gives you a higher chance of being successful shouldn't be looked at as like black and white or anything like that it's just like giving yourself more wiggle room which like inherently is a good thing you know so. Sure. Yeah, I think we hear so much to wrap this up. I think we hear so much on, on uh, Twitter, especially where it's basically like uh, people want to argue, is Velo the number one thing or not? And the answer is nothing is the number one thing. It's yeah. never going to be a thing, you know. Um, uh, nice little name drop here and I'll pick it up after this, but I had a conversation with Luis Gonzalez the other day uh, at his house uh, where we we're doing, yeah, filming live ABs. He's letting us come over. It's been pretty nice. He won't hit though, but he won't hit off Eric Sim, but we'll get him. We'll figure, we'll get him to hit <laughs> off Eric Sim, dude. And of course, my luck, Eric Sim is going to freaking drill him on accident. Uh, that's always how this happens. But anyways, having a conversation with Luis about um, where the game has gone. And it was really interesting. Um, and he was talking about where the game is going. Um, and basically what he was saying, which makes so much sense is like, uh, he was referencing our live at bats that we had been doing. And a few guys have been hit so far uh, in live at bats. And he was saying like, you look at the pitchers that are throwing here in live at bats. He said it was so such a good representation of where the game is going. Uh, because back when he was playing, there was so much focus on just like commanding and putting the ball where you want it to go. Um, whereas now, uh, there's so much more focus on uh, throwing like big time stuff. It doesn't really matter where the ball's going as long as it's like somewhere around, if that makes sense. But his point was that the guys who are the best, like the best of the best, are always going to be the guys who throw the hardest with the best stuff, who are the best pitchers. It's always going to be all three. It's never like we keep trying to pick one. Oh, it's command that's the best. Oh, it's velocity that's the best. Oh, it's stuff that's the best. And in reality, each of those is going to make you better. But it is not the one. The one is having everything. Uh, and I think, uh, I mean, we say this more and more about pitching, but it's always about having everything. And each thing is important. It's a little like a little slider that you can increase or whatever, you know, to try and make yourself better. But at the end of the day, it's just one of the sliders to try and increase to make yourself better. Um, so yeah, Dan, really appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, love to connect with you as always. Um, just thanks. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was my pleasure, man. Anytime we can talk, anytime we can talk value of Velo, you know I'm, you know I'm game, man. So no, I appreciate you, Dean. Absolutely.